Hola, buenas noches. Hello, Patrick. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Muchas gracias a todos y a todas por acompañarnos. We are very happy here to be tonight with the O'Neill School of um, of Public and, and Environmental Affairs uh, from the Indiana University. With, uh, the, with the Indiana University, we have a long-standing relationship. Our, our uh, executive director is an alumni from, from that university. She always talks very fondly of the university. And uh, so we're very always very honored and very happy to be sharing information about um, Indiana. And we're very happy, spe especially today, because it is the subjects that are much needed in our country and in the world. So we are very happy to be hearing from you. And we have a very um, special bond and we have a, a scholarship which you guys can benefit, benefit from. So please take advantage that Patrick and Leah from the University of Indiana are here tonight with us and make all the questions that you want. Las pueden hacer en español, you can do them in Spanish, you can open your mics at the end, or you can just pop them in the chat as the session goes on, and we will talk about it in the end. Patrick, thank you so much for your time, for being here tonight, and of course, for the support you always give the FUNED scholars. We're very excited to be here tonight. Um, this session is going to be recorded, so if anyone knows anyone who might benefit from this information, you can find it on our YouTube channel tomorrow or the day after, but sometime during this week for sure. Uh, and please let them know about, about this. So I will leave you, Patrick, to it. And uh, yeah, please do your questions. And yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you all so much for having me. And, and again, uh, buenos noches uh, to you all. Um, mucho gracias for having us. Uh, so, so appreciate it. Um, and please, uh, as we dive into the presentation, if you do have any questions, um, just uh, echoing Sophia as well, please feel free to, to ask uh, along the way. Um, so I have a brief presentation that I've prepared um, just to cover uh, a little bit of information about our Master of Public Affairs program. Um, now, that's just one of... Uh, uh, about five or six growing programs that we have to offer here at the O'Neill School, um, along with some programs that we have in environmental science and sustainability, as well as a Master of International Affairs, Healthcare Management, and Arts Administration. Um, so uh, along the way, if you have any questions about those uh, programs as well, please feel free to ask. Um, and Sophia, should I have the ability to, to share my screen here? Ah, I see it now. You do, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Let's see here. Okay. All right, can everybody see the presentation? Yes. Good. Okay. All right, so uh, just diving into the program a little bit. Um, so the O'Neill School uh, is one of the, the oldest schools of our kind. Um, we are celebrating, well, I guess, gosh, we've actually celebrated, we wrapped up our celebration last year, celebrating 50 years of being a school, um, of being a, an area of study, an official college here within Indiana University. Um, and so our, our program, it really builds on, you know, five decades of innovation, interdisciplinary um, research, um, and it is a, a professional degree program. The Master of Public Affairs program um, really does prepare students for careers in the public, private, or nonprofit sectors. We find that our alums um, are able to easily transition um, their careers in, in, into each of those sectors um, and Typically, you know, throughout their career, they will work in each of those three. Um, and after graduation, too, you know, we find that about roughly a third of students do go into the private, a third go into public, a third go into nonprofit. So it's pretty evenly split, um, even exiting the program and, and launching uh, your career after grad school. Um, so our Master Public Affairs program, it is a 48-credit, two-year degree program. Um, 
And so there's 24 core credits, um, and those are detailed here um, in the presentation. Everything from, um, you know, administrative skills to policy analysis skills um, to uh, ways to work in an international perspective in the MPA program. Um, notice that you have the option um, to study just public policy process or do like a comparative international policy process course. Um, we've also just launched a global capstone option. Um, so for those um, that would like to work with a global client, you may. Um, we've worked with clients in uh, Europe uh, as well as Vietnam. Um, we sent a group of students over spring break um, just a few months back to our client in Berlin where they actually worked with them um, uh, in developing a solution for their this real world client, okay? Um, there are uh, about 12 different concentrations that you can focus on throughout the MPA program as well. Um, and so that takes up about 15 credits uh, through the concentration. Um, and then lastly, there's nine elective credits to bring us up to the full total of 48 credits. Um, and I, I want to mention too that those concentrations range everything from nonprofit management, public management, policy analysis, health policy, uh, natural resource management, and environmental sustainability. So it, it does cover uh, a kind of a, a wide range. Um, and there's also a specialized concentration. So if there is a particular uh, topic or focus area that you that you your, your interest is really piqued, um, we can work with you collaboratively to develop that specialized concentration. Um, and all of our students um, do get hands-on learning experience too. There is an experiential learning requirement. Um, this can be fulfilled through a couple of ways. Uh, many of our students fulfill that through an internship that they complete. Um, some may be eligible for prior professional experience, um, as well as um, through an independent or group research project. Um, so there's a couple different avenues that, um, it, you know, if you're thinking more on the research side, you know, that might be an option. Um, but again, it is designed to be a professional degree program. And, and what I mean by that, what we mean by that is, you know, we, we really want to prepare students with the essential skills that they need to, you know, the tools that they need to skill up. Um, and really be successful and implement in uh, their roles, you know, day one after graduation, okay? Um, there is also a capstone experience. Um, and this, again, is a collaborative learning experience um, where you're working with a real-world client. Um, so our clients, um, some here locally in Bloomington, some around the state or around the region. Um, others we have that are, are submitting a capstone requests to us from around the globe, okay? Um, but essentially a, a client comes to us with a, 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 a problem that they're experiencing um, and our students are the ones that are going to be working on all aspects of that um, to present a solution um, to the client. Um, again, very collaborative. Everyone in the class is working together um, to solve this problem. Um, and it, it really is truly interdisciplinary. You know, there may be a group of students within the class that is working on solving, you know, maybe a policy issue. There may be a group of students within the, the cl class that is working on, you know, um, uh, a, a management of uh, of implementation. Maybe there's a group working on finance and budget. Um, there could be a scientific aspect to it as well, or maybe a sustainability aspect. Um, but again, all of the students in class are working together. Um, and lastly, just to discuss um, outcomes a little bit, as I mentioned already, you know, 
our our degrees you know are really purposeful we've created a curriculum we've we've designed the program with intention to give students actionable skills um, it is a very well-rounded program we want students to not only have administrative skills um, but we want them to have hands-on data analytics skills um, we want them to understand legal practices um, as well as statistical analysis and management um, and then you know, the the implementation piece right being able to um, successfully implement that is um, so important uh, at the end of the program um, to ensuring your success um, also i uh, want to mention briefly that we are launching a, a masters of public policy um, program um, so that will be launching the fall of 2025 um, and just kind of the uh, a few of the differences here, um, you know, uh, public policy is a little bit different than uh, public affairs. Um, it is a little bit heavier on the quant side. OK, um, so through an MPP, this is going to give students the opportunity to further develop skills, analyzing and evaluating and solving aspects of policy. Um, really through the lens of, of quantitative data, microeconomic tools um, to develop and uh, uh, assess and evaluate, um, you know, it, emerging issues like what's what's becoming an issue um, to track that data, as well as to use the data to inform decision making policy practices. Um, and I think another part of this, again, is the assessment piece, is to assess um, if, if the policy is, is working as intended, okay? Um, so, you know, just again to kind of think about the MPP versus, say, an MPA program. Um, uh, an individual with a master's of public policy um, would really focus on evaluation and analysis of public policy in order to um, advocate for effective design of public policy in public programs. Whereas a master of public affairs, you do get a bit of the administration piece and a bit of the policy piece, um, but you're really focusing on the management of, of people in within your organization, individuals around you um, to implement um, and effectively design um, programs and, and public organizations. And then uh, we'll discuss some of the different pathways. Again, um, our Master of Public Affairs program um, offers three different unique modalities. Um, so we have a, a residential program that is here in Indiana. We have a fully online option. Um, as well, we have um, several different dual degree options. Um, and we've recently just launched uh, a DC Accelerator program where you spend one year in Washington, DC. Um, actually, you spend your second year in DC. So you spend first year um, knocking out core curriculum in uh in bloomington here and then you spend your second year in, in uh washington dc um, again our residential program this all looks pretty similar uh, throughout all of these options are going to be 48 credit hours to complete as a full-time student doing the residential program um, it it is two years um, and again there's about 12 Concent 12 different concentrations, 13 including the specialized concentration, and uh, we have start dates available in the spring and the fall semesters. I'll cover those unique um, concentrations here. As you can see, I, I mentioned some of them before, uh, like our health policy, um, but it's, it's really a, a well-rounded list, local government management, um, public management, uh, energy and climate policy. So there really is uh, a lot of opportunity to explore different areas. Um, and then lastly, to do that specialized concentration as well, if there's bits and pieces of each that pique your interest. 
And then our online program, also 48 credit hours. Most folks in this program are, are also um, working during the, the time that they're in school. So they're completing this, you know, at their own pace, typically part-time student status. Um, we find that these students have a typical completion time frame of about three years, okay? Um, the online MPA program does provide a high degree of flexibility. It is completely asynchronous, so there's never a set time where you're required to log in. Um, and classes here start fall, spring, and during our summer semester as well. Um, now, you'll notice that there is a little bit difference in the uh, uh, number of areas that students can focus in. Um, we, you know, just due to capacity um, and due to demand, um, our online program currently has nonprofit management, policy analysis, and public management offered as our concentration or focus area options. Um, and then there is also an O'Neill Online Week. This is an experience where you, as an online student, um, you have the opportunity to come to Bloomington. Um, so it's a one week intensive course where you are earning three credit hours. Um, it, it's completely voluntary. You don't have to make the trek here, um, but it is a fun experience. Um, you do get to meet uh, a lot of the peers that you've kind of been going through classes with here on campus. You get to put some names with faces. You get to meet uh, our professors and our faculty and our staff that you've met along the way, um, as well spend time here uh, at our beautiful campus um, and enjoy a little bit of everything that IU, the university has to offer. Um, get some fantastic food here in Bloomington as well, down on Kirkwood. Um, but you really get to have kind of that experience. Um, and this can also count as your capstone course, okay? Um, so students that are nearing the end of their program, um, you know, the, instead of choosing to spend a 16-week semester in a capstone course, you can come to Bloomington and do this in one week and knock out your capstone. Um, there are some uh, dual degree options as well. As I mentioned, we have a uh, Master's of Science in Environmental Science program. Um, you can do a dual degree with the MPA there. Um, so the MPA is 48 credit hours for an additional semester, an additional 12 credit hours. So two and a half years to complete basically. Um, and, and so it's 60 total credits, but you earn two complete master's degrees. So you earn an MPA and a Master of Science in Environmental Science. Um, and this really positions students well to be you know, leaders in lab work, leaders in the field to understand that work, uh, and then to also be able to translate that uh, in a way that is actionable for policymakers, for change makers, okay? Uh, we also have another option where students pursue a Master's of Arts in Arts Administration. Now, this is 15 additional credit hours, so it makes it 63 total credits. Um, and again, still about a two and a half year completion time frame. Um, but this is for folks that want to be at the intersection of, of kind of um, grant development and fund development. Um, thinking about how the arts are are uh, impacted by public policy, um, as well as private and uh, public donation. Um, and so a good crossover there with our Master of Public Affairs program. Uh, and then lastly, we also have our Master of Public Affairs uh, and our Master of International Affairs. Um, so this gives you a really well-rounded um, view of, of both, you know, potentially how um, you know, domestic policy is implemented, um, but as well on a global scale of, of how global governance um, is, is created as well. Um, and so this is 60 total credit hours to complete two master's degrees, two and a half year uh, completion time frame. Um, and again, provides students with a really thorough understanding of both international affairs in theory and practice combined with a robust skill set in uh, public affairs policy analysis.
And then I, I would just really encourage students to stay connected with us. Um, anybody interested in learning more about our various programs, you can visit o'neill.indiana.edu uh, slash masters to kind of take a, a further investigation at, at all of our other programs. Um, we also frequently have various different virtual information sessions, um, as well as a ton of recorded um, webinar kind of uh, at your own leisure uh, content on YouTube. Um, so feel free to kind of give that a look over and, and stay in contact with us, okay? Um, if you would like to apply um, or, you know, have any further questions, do not hesitate for a second to reach back out to myself or my colleague, Mallory Elver. Um, we were both uh, assistant directors of graduate student recruitment, so we're there to help every step along the way. Um, or send us an email, uh, whatever is most convenient for you, but but truly, um, you know, we're, we're there to help. We're here to serve, okay? Um, and then, uh, Sophia, if, if there's any other questions that you maybe have, I'd be happy to dive in um, there or um, any other topics that I could help cover, questions that I could help cover, please let me know. Thank you so much, Patrick. That was great. Um, yeah, so I'm just leaving the floor for anyone who has any questions. Uh, so uh, Miguel is starting with uh, which were the dual programs? Yeah, great question. So here within the O'Neill School itself, we have um, a dual, let me pull them back up here. So we have a dual Master of Public Affairs with our Masters of Science and Environmental Science. We have a dual Master of Public Affairs with the Masters of Arts and Arts Administration program and a dual Master of Public Affairs with our Masters of International Affairs program. Um, now, those are the options within the O'Neill School itself, um, but we do have several other partners on campus. Um, so, for instance, here at Indiana University as well, we have our Maurer School of Law. Um, we also have the option for students to do like a, an MPA JD, okay? Um, uh, and then there's, um, the, that's just one example, but there are also outside dual degrees that we have here with other schools mm -hmm. on IU's campus. Thank you so much, uh, Patrick. I just wanted to say that always there's a question of how you're going to fund, how you're going to finance, uh, you're going to pay for the investment. Uh, maybe, I don't know if you have um, some, like the return of investment of of like like a, a percentage or, you know, like an average of, of, of your alumni. And um, while, while you think about that, I'm just, I just want to say that at FUNED, we're more than happy to finance, to help you fund uh, any degree over at the O'Neill School. Um, of course, but there are partners and we, and it's a very good school. So we know that if you invest your time and money over there, you're going to do very good in the future. So we would be more than happy to invest that. And also that to share that anyone who is funded by FUNED can get a scholarship of up to $5,000 per year for your programs. So you might want to look into that and that make that might make it a little bit easier um, on, on when you're thinking about your finances. Yeah, I, and I, I saw another question come in here just a little bit about the, the cost of the degree program. Let me share that with you now here and, and I'll go ahead and pull that up and, and share my screen again with everyone. Um, so here I just went to our website. Um, we do have it broken down, tuition and fees for the program. Um, so for uh, a non-resident of the state of Indiana, uh, total tuition and fees for the MPA program, we're looking at about $71,000. Um, now that is total cost for, for both years for all 48 credit hours. Um, and then we also go down here and we break down kind of what the average housing looks like here in Bloomington, Indiana. Um, now, I will say that um, Bloomington is one of the more affordable um, areas here in the United States, um, as opposed to, you know, the, the East Coast, the West Coast, or, or even, you know, 
Chicago, big metropolitan areas. Um, we actually have a relatively affordable cost of living for housing, food and groceries, um, et cetera, okay? That is always great to know. Thank you. Um, they're ask Miguel is asking if it's the same cost for the dual degrees. Great question. Um, so it it is a little bit different for the dual degrees. For the dual degrees, we're, we are tacking on, you know, about 12 additional credits. Um, so dual degrees for the two and a half year, 60 credit hour programs, we're looking at right about 89,000, okay? But then you have two degrees for <laughs> not Correct. Like, yeah. Correct. Yeah, you you actually have two separate master's degrees. Mm -hmm. Some thank you. Anyone else? Maybe uh just to make it interesting, do you have top of your mind an an example of um of of you you were mentioning like real life cases like an example that you can share with us of what what the students might find what they might work with etc. Yeah, yeah. I so one that one that um, I always uh, showcase and share is that here in in rural Indiana, um, uh, we have a county. Um, I want to say it's Decatur County, but let me double check on that. Um, uh, so yes, um, so one of the things that we worked on, um, with, uh, one of our clients, um, was a, and I'll, I'll see if I can't find this uh, article for you. Um, I'm so sorry uh, that I, I can't find this more readily no worries, uh, for no everyone. Um, no worries. It was just out of curiosity. <laughs> no, it's a fantastic question. A and our students really do some excellent work. Um, so let me just... Pull this up. Uh, because we have past, past capstones and past clients. Ah, here we go. Let me drop this in the chat for everyone here. Um, just so that everybody has has access um, to this web page um, to see some of our, our most recent um, capstone events. Um, but one that we're especially proud of um, is that there was an initiative in a, a local rural community um, to establish a Latinx welcome center um, for, for resources, for community building um, here. And so the community approached the O'Neill School um, to work on the implementation of how they could launch um, the center. And so we created a proposal uh, and and sent that over to them. And just, uh, it might have been the fall of last year, uh, the center actually opened its doors. Wow. Uh, so it, it's just one example that the hands-on work that our students do in the capstone experience it's not just busy work, right? It's not just, you know, a project that's going to get shit put put on a shelf and, and you know, never seen the light of day again, okay? Um, they are real um, impactful projects um, that help communities um, here in the United States and around the globe. Thank you. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, uh, there's a question from Mauricio. The MPA is a research or taught master? So it, there are opportunities to conduct research, but it really is more of a professional based, you know, you're, you're learning um, both theory and practical implementation in class. Okay. okay.
Awesome, thank you. Um, and also, uh, can you give us more st statistics of students, like how many international mm -hmm. students, what kind of profile they have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here throughout all of our programs, uh, about 14% of our student body are international students. Um, so every year, I, you know, I'd say we, we look at intaking probably close to about somewhere in the neighborhood, 60, 70, maybe 80 international students from around the globe. Okay. Um, and and um, they're, they're kind of profiles that they have. Um, you know, I would say that most are maybe a few years out of their undergraduate careers. Okay. Um, they're looking to kind of skill up to take their careers to the next level. Um, and, uh, you know, that they are at a place in their career where, you know, they may have the opportunity to make the move, um, to Bloomington, uh, of course. Um, but they really come from all different backgrounds, from all different um, areas of study fields. Um, you know, there there really is the sky's the limit kind of thing to that. Um, and, and so we have a really, really wonderful, um, diverse mix of, of folks in the program from uh, around the globe and around the country. Um, it, it's one thing that we really celebrate. It, it so enhances our classroom discussions, you know, mm -hmm. to see everybody's different viewpoint and everybody's different lens. Um, and, and that sharing is, you know, just so wonderful. And one of the special things I think about the O'Neill School. Yeah, totally. Thank you. Um, Alguien más? Algo? Ah, Lia, Lia. <laughs> yeah. So hi, everyone. I am Lea Albaran. I work for the Indiana University Mexico Gateway, and I am also interested in studying a master's degree in Indiana. So I am here to like uh, seize the opportunity of both things. Thank you for the amazing event. And well, just to add uh, a couple uh, comments regarding the international community in, in O'Neill School and Indiana, in Indiana University. Um, well, as a student in Indiana University, you can access several um, facilities, let's say. Uh, there are many things that you can do there as an international student. And as part of that, you can use the um, the office in, in Mexico. And we have uh, five different international offices. So if you are interested in, in um, doing a short term in Mexico, you can um, contact us and then come here again to, to study like for two weeks or so, or maybe more, maybe less. But you can also go to, I don't know, Germany, um, Berlin, yeah, uh, Beijing, sorry. And well, now we, we have a, brand, a new brand in uh, Ghana. So um, yeah, I feel like uh, having uh, this kind of offices uh, can also foster the the uh, international opportunities. That would be more or less what I wanted to say. And I'm going to drop my mail in the chat in case you also would like to uh, contact the Mexican office. Thank you. Gracias, Lia. Anyone else? Do, does anyone else have any questions? For Patrick, Lia, or myself? Okay. I don't so know if it was mentioned before, but um, uh, how much is the income for uh, graduate mm -hmm. people from the, your university? Yeah, it it varies quite a bit, honestly. Um, so, you know, because some of our students go into nonprofit work, which as we know, it is is valuable work, but often not compensated at, at the same grade as as say a, a private industry role. Um, it's really quite a wide span, um, and we just don't have very accurate metrics on what um, say like an average earning would be. Okay, it makes sense. 
And also it might depend on which uh, non-for-profit you go, uh, if it's like very well funded or or not so much and et cetera, no? Yes, there it, it's such a it's such a wide gap um, in, in between some folks, um, and, and you know we, of course we encourage students to um, go into fields and roles that they're passionate about, um, and so some students choose to do you know private consulting work. and go to work for like Deloitte, Grant Thornton, some of the bigger names in consulting. Um, some choose to work for a, a local nonprofit, you know, some could be working here in Bloomington still, um, uh, working on, you know, preventing nitrates from entering the watershed here in Monroe County. Um, and so it's just a really wide range. Um, but we, we encourage students to, um, you know, pursue careers that make them happy, that make an impact, a positive impact on the world. Um, our motto here at O'Neill is lead for the greater good. Um, and so, you know, students do that in a variety of ways um, and in, in a variety of, of positions and roles too. Um, so it really, it's just, it's a really wide um, span. I, I would, though, like to show you, um, share with you at least some of the agencies, some of the organizations that have recently been reported to us where students are, are working at um, and where kind of like job titles for some of our students. And so I'll go ahead and, and share that now. This is on our website. I'll share the link now. Um, Overall, though, our students have a 98% placement rate, okay, that they're either continuing their education or that they're in a full-time role six months post-graduation, okay? Um, and so, you know, they, they are finding jobs and positions um, once they leave the O'Neill School. Um, and in fact, about 19% of our alums uh, go on to work globally, go on to work internationally, okay? Um, then it, we have it broken down as well by our Master of Public Affairs residential graduates as well as our online graduates. Um, and you can really see that they go to work at all levels of government, um, state, local, federal government. Um, again, some... Uh, nonprofit roles, international nonprofits, larger nonprofits, as well as smaller nonprofits. Um, and then across private industry as well. Thank you. That's a very helpful link. Thank you so much, Patrick. Of course. And, and I apologize. I was working on finding um, some more uh, about the uh, Welcome Center and I was wrong. It's not Decatur County. It was Du Bois County here in Indiana. Oh. Um, and I will find some um, some more information here because, of course, we were very proud of the work that we did there. Yeah, I bet. And it must have been fun as well. It, it was, yes. So everybody that was a part of that capstone project um, took a trip down to Du Bois County. Um, kind of met with city officials, city leaders, um, uh, local government officials there, um, and then uh, came together for the the resource center. So uh, again, we were we were very. Um, oh, here we go. Here's the here's the story about it, and and I'll go ahead and drop this into the chat too, so that you can just see. Um, some of the work that we're doing here. Perfect. Thank you so much. Does anyone else have a question? Alguien más tiene una pregunta, la pueden hacer en español y yo les traduzco si les da pena. No. Okay, I think uh, no one else has any more questions. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight, especially Patrick and Leah, for your time. Uh, it was great hearing from you. And um, we hope to see some people sending over um, 
you know, uh, the request to, to go to O'Neill and hopefully we'll see them there next year or the year after that. Thank you so much for your time and uh, yeah, have a good night. And I just dropped my chat or my direct email address into the chat feature as well. Um, so feel free if you have any questions, contact me, okay? Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye.